I'm Lisa Road and I'm a sixth grade teacher. Um, I've been teaching sixth grade, this will be my 10th year. I started out just being curious about the Raspberry Pi and I found out about um, Dexter and the robots they have and I thought they were really cool. Then I applied for a grant and was able to get 10 more robots out of that. Once my school saw the enthusiasm, I was able to get even more funding through the PTA. So again, once you get that enthusiasm, you see the kids working with the robots, people get excited. I thought that it was really cool that it was so basic and you could teach kids how to use a computer and what a computer is right at the fundamentals. I have no background in computers. I had no idea what I was doing. Um, it's really easy to get involved once you're committed to learning about it and being open to making mistakes and to learning with your kids. I was, I was really nervous about starting out. Like I said, these robots are really simple to get started and running and the folks at Dexter have been really nice and helpful anytime I've needed some support. Your kids are gonna push you to learn more and to do more. And so being open to those new experiences and that there's gonna be some failures and that's okay. You push through that and you learn even more. Not all of the lessons that we do with the robots have them programming. Sometimes they're just learning about how it works. And that's why I think it's so cool that everything's exposed and so simple. I've used it in a whole bunch of different uh, areas. I've used it in language arts. I've used it in science. Um, I, I'm excited about some of the lessons I've been working on to try in math. Um, it really lends itself to a whole bunch of different content areas. So in language arts, we use the uh, line follower and the students created a tour of a new park that they made. And so they had to create an essay and then as the robot went through the park, it told the essay um, and the different aspects of the park. Um, some people say that I just don't have time, I need to fit everything in. Well, if you invest the time, the students are understanding it at a deeper level um, and that's gonna stay with them. You have your highest kids in the class and they are really interested in it. And some of your kids who struggle across the board, they get excited when the robots come out and they're more engaged. With the GoPi Go, Go uh, we usually talk about how we just have the computer that tells um, the GoPi Go what to do. So after I've talked about the Raspberry Pi, um, and that there's a motor controller that we need to tell the motors somehow how to work. And so that's why we have this additional board. Um, and that's really the basics I start out with. Um, but just really saying that these two together is what's making it work. So one of the projects, um, my class learns about space technology and space exploration. Um, and so we talked about the Mars rover and said, hey, it'd be cool to turn the GoPi Go into a Mars rover. Um, so they created their own Martian land, just using some cardboard and old materials out of our makerspace, and then added different fake sensors onto their GoPi Go, in addition to an ultrasonic sensor and a camera, so that they could have their robot go out and explore this new terrain. And then this year we're gonna add in the temperature sensor so they can see if it's habitable. So can we go out in this land and actually survive? Um, so that was really cool. It got the kids really interested in it and showing how scientists might be um, using robots in real life. Um, another lesson is about cold-blooded animals, um, where the, the students create their own cold-blooded animal after learning about them. Um, they'll use the temperature sensor so that when their robot gets too warm or too cold, it'll either move into the shade or move back into the sun to warm up or cool off. So the students also, again, in the robotics club, um, they created a arm to add onto the GoPi Go to hold a marker and then they were either um, creating a picture of something or they had to write a letter um, by programming the GoPi Go to move in a certain way. So we were talking, I was talking to some of my students about the different sensors and what they thought would be cool to do with them. Um, and one of the ideas was to um, create something that ha does more works code. And so we did it on the Grove Pi as well as the GoPi Go. On the GoPi Go, we just used the LEDs and it would flash out um, different messages in Morse code. And then with the Grove Pi, um, they either use the buzzer or an LED to flash out different messages using Morse code. So when I'm looking for curriculum, especially with something that I'm not as familiar with, um, I'm looking for something that explains how to do it um, and breaks it down for me. That I have the handouts that I need, that I have the explanation, and that maybe even have some examples of what's going on and what it might look like. Um, that way I can do the lesson the first time as it's written and then I can expand on it and I can feel more comfortable to um, branch out on my own instead of just starting from nothing. When I got my first GoPi Go, it was shortly after the Kickstarter, um, so I got one of the first generation ones, and it's been really neat to see how much the company has evolved since then. Not only have they improved the product, adding curriculum and adding in activities and more tutorials for um, first-time users and then for people who are more experienced being able to go even farther. 